Hello student, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we are going to study on the topic map projection. As we all know, map is an important tool for many study. Perhaps it is fundamental to society as much as it is for language and written script. Map not only help us in getting direction or location, it also help us recognize various spatial distribution and the relationship existing on the surface of the earth. It also help us in recognizing and understanding the various processes that exist or occur on the spatial space. But one of the biggest challenges for a map maker is the shape of the earth itself, that is oblique spheroid. If we want to represent the curved surface of the earth on the plane surface, then one would occur encounter a distortion of parallels and meridian. So in order to understand this distortion, one have to have the basic concept of the map projection. So this map projection is going to give us the whole basic concept of the process of map making. So understanding map projection would help us in giving us the basic concept of the process of map making and reproduction of Earth's curved surface into a plane surface. So today in this module, we will talk about four basic objective. The first objective is the reproduction of Earth's curved surface into a plane surface. And second objective, we will talk about how to transform the geographic coordinates into projected coordinates. And third, we will try to discuss about various map projection and its properties. And in the fourth, we will talk about the application of map projection in geographic information system, that is the GIS. Okay, student, map are one of the oldest type of documents. As we can see, it has been used from very ancient time. And then people has been using this map to represent various features on the surface of the earth as well as many of the terrestrial objects are also being depicted on this map. The earth is conceptually a spherical surface when we need to reduce the scale so that one can use it for reference. The simplest way to map the earth surface without any kind of distortion is when we map into a globe that is the model of the earth. When we do so, all the things which we do is we just change the size of the earth. But globe has its own disadvantages. They are very much expensive, difficult to practice. That is, that it is very much difficult to measure and draw and reproduce and very difficult to carry. Moreover, only half of the globe is visible at one time. All these drawback of globe are solved out when a map can be prepared on a flat surface. But constructing a map on a plain surface does require important operation in addition to altering its scale. A cartographical map projection is a formal process which mathematically converts features between a spherical and ellipsoidal surface to a projected flat surface. It is a mathematical representation how to represent the curved earth surface on a flat map. So the field of map projection concerns itself with the way of transforming the curved surface of the earth into a flat surface. To represent the surface to a curved earth on a flat paper or on a computer screen, the curved horizontal reference surface must be mapped on the two-dimensional 2D mapping plane. The reference surface for a large-scale mapping is usually a blade ellipsoid and for small-scale mapping is a sphere. Mapping on a 2D surface means transforming each and every point on the reference surface with geographic coordinates, that is the latitude and longitude into a set of projected coordinates, that is the X and Y that can represent the position of features on the flat surface. 
it is a systematic transformation of a latitude and longitude of a particular location on surface of the sphere into location on a flat surface. Map projection are necessary for creating maps. However, all maps projection distort the earth's surface into some limited extent. Depending upon the purpose of the map, some distortions are acceptable while some are not. Therefore, different maps projection are applied in order to maintain or preserve some particular properties. As you can see here in the diagram, it shows how the geographic coordinates are projected on a flat 2D surface with the help of map projection. Next, we will talk about matrix properties of the map. The map are prepared to be a normal view for a viewer that is looking straight down to each and every point on the map. This is also called the perpendicular view. The metric properties of map that need to be preserved are area, shape, distance, direction, bearing and scale. Every map projection maintain at least one of these properties. The purpose of the map generally determines which of the map projection is best suitable. And a point to be noted here is that another consideration in the configuration of map projection is its compatibility with data set to be used on the map. Data set are geographic information collected depending on the datum model of the earth. And in the later stage of our presentation, we will be talking about what is a datum. Students, now let us look into the scale factor and transformation. The best way to understand how map projections are constructed is to see it as two stage processes. The first one is the reduction of the size of the earth in reference to a hypothetical globe that is the scale. And the second is the transform each and every point of the globe into a flat surface x and y that is transformation of geographic coordinates into projected coordinates. The scale of the per particular projection is the transformation of scale of the globe or spherical surface that is representative fraction which is RF and also called as principal scale into a scale of flat surface that is called scale factor which is SF. The principal scale is dividing the radius of the earth by the radius of the globe on reference to the globe the actual scale anywhere is always be the same. The scale factor is actual scale divided by the principal scale. When a part of the globe surface is transformed in a flat surface the actual scale at different part of the map will be larger or smaller than the principal scale due to inapplicability of spares surface or flat surface. This is why one cannot be transformed into without any distortion. Consequently, the SF will always vary from place to place on the map surface. Now here if you see in the diagram, we can see distortion of scale due to flattening of a piece of spherical reference surface. So a point can be noted here is that the RF that is representative fraction is a fraction or ratio in relation to real art surface and map surface. It may be shown either as 1 is to 1 lakh or as 1 divided by 1 lakh that denote along a particular line 1 millimeter or 1 centimeter or 1 inch representing 1 lakh millimeter, centimeter or inch on the actual earth surface. Students, now let us look into the relationship between coordinates and map projection. The coordinates are the latitude and longitudinal position of the earth's point that usually represented as x and y, where x refers to the longitudinal position while y refers to latitudinal position of the particular earth's point. A coordinate system is superimposed on the map surface to provide the referencing framework by which x and y position can be computed and measured. 
Now let us look into the types of map projection. Map projection can be divided in terms of developable surface that are cylindrical. That is, the developable surface is a cylinder. Number two is the conical. That is, the developable surface is a cone. And planar or azimuthal, which is the developable surface is a flat. As you can see from the diagram, we have three diagram. One is cylindrical, second is conical, and third is azimuthal. And next is according to the projection point of view, that is nomadic projection viewpoint at the center of the globe. As you can see here in the diagram, the developable point is the center of the earth. Next is orthographic projection and stereographic projection where orthographic projection views at the infinity and stereographic projection views on the surface at the far side of the globe. Here two diagrams are given one is for stereographic projection and where the other one is map projection according to the viewpoint or the projection point. Now let us look into the aspect of map projection. During the construction of a projection system, the developable surface of the map can be placed in three different ways. That is normal aspect, transverse aspect and oblique aspect. Now if you can see from the diagram, it will be clearly depicted that how in the azimuthal projection, the normal aspect and the transverse aspect and the oblique aspect can be seen and developable through in a flat surface. The next diagram, if you, if you see, then the three aspect of normal, transverse and oblique of cylindrical projection will be clearly depicted, showing that how this cylindrical projection could be created looking at these three aspects. And in the third diagram, if you see the conical projection in the same manner of three aspect, where the first shows the normal aspect of conical projection, the second shows the transverse aspect of conical projection and the third is the oblique aspect of conical projection. And how can this map be represented in many different ways? Now as I have already mentioned that there is always a distortion while reproducing a map on the plane surface. Now let us look into the distortion properties the selection of a map projection system is determined by the kind of distortion it will preserve and compare in reference to real earth surface. The first one is in a conformal that is orthomorphic map projection the angle line between in the map are identical to the angle between the original line on the curve reference surface. This means that the angle with short sided and sharp that width of the small areas are shown correctly on the map. And number two is in an equal area that is equivalent map projection, the areas in the map are identical to the areas on the curves reference surface, taking into account the map scale, which means that areas are represented correctly on the map. And finally, in the third, in the equidistant map projection, the length of particular line in the map are the same as the length of the original line on the curve reference surface that is taking into account the map scale. So a particular map projection can have any one of these three projection. No map projection can be both conformal and equal area. A projection can only be equidistant that is true to scale at certain place or in certain direction. The two major concern that drive the choice for a projection are the compatibility of different data set and the amount of tolerable metric distortion. On small area, data compatibility issue are more important than metric distortion are minimal at this level. In very large area, on the other hand, distortion is more important factor to consider. Okay, now let us look into some of the important map projection and their descriptions. 
let us look into the cylindrical first central cylindrical map projection is perspective but not conformal nor equal area projected perspectively from the center of the earth into the cylinder tangent to the equator only used for teaching purposes next is equidistance cylindrical also known as simple cylindrical or plate carry the projection is equidistant in the direction of the meridians parallels and meridians half as long as the parallels are equally spaced straight line forming square blocks this projection map longitude and latitude directly into x and y hence is sometimes called the latitude longitude projection in google earth used for display of imagery the transverse version is known as cassini projection equi rectangular this is also known as plate rectangle a variant of plate carry used for raster map which stores information of the whole whole world its pixel represents a rectangular block of latitude and longitude coordinates next is the gull peters similar to lambert cylindrical equal area projection but with standard parallel at 45 degree north and south the next is lambert cylindrical equal area projection it is of little use for world map because of the distortion mainly used for educational purposes the next is the miller's cylindrical modified marcaster's projection proposed by om miller compromise between marcaster and other cylindrical projection shape area and scale distortion increases moderately away from the equator used in numerous world map the next is the molvets projection pseudo cylindrical projection map is equal area occasionally used in thematic thematic world maps the next is marcaster's projection conformal map projection designed for navigational use standard for marine chart recommended use for conformal mapping of regions predominantly bordering the equator often inappropriately used as a world map the next is transverse marcator also called as gauss conformal or gauss kruger transverse form of the marcator's projection used for topographic map at the scale from 1 is to 20000 to 1 is to 2 lakhs 50000 recommended for conformal mapping of region that are predominantly north south in extent and the next is the universal transverse marcator which is also known as utm a version of a transverse marcator but one with the second map surface it divides the world into 60 narrow longitudinal zone of 6 degree widely used standard for topographic map and military map next is the azimuthal projection and within this azimuthal projection the first is the azimuthal equidistance distance measured from the center of the map to any point are correct and the bearing of any point from the center is correct which means it applies to all the azimuthal map commonly used in the polar aspect for map of polar regions and the northern and southern hemisphere the oblique aspect is frequently used for world or air route map centered on important cities and occasionally for maps of continents and the next is nomonic projection this map is perspective and neither conformal nor equal area area shape distance and direction distortion are extreme 
it is used to show great circle path as straight line and thus to assist navigator and aviator the next is the hammer itof which is the variant of lambert azimuthal equal area used for thematic maps of the whole world next is lambert azimuthal equal area which is used for map of continents and hemisphere also suited for regions extending equal in all direction from the center point such as asia and pacific ocean recommended to the european commission for statistical analysis and display and the next is autographic known by egyptian and greeks 2000 years ago map is perspective and neither conformal nor equal area only one hemisphere can be shown the art appears as it would on the photograph from space and the next is stereographic projection apparently interven in invented by hipparchus used in combination with utm projection as universal polar stereographic for mapping poles and in navigation chart for latitude above 80 degree recommended for conformal mapping of regions that are approximately circular in shape a modified version of the stereographic projection is used in the netherlands for large scale and topographic map then next coming up to the conical projection the first we have the albers equal area conic it is equal to lambert's equal area conic but has two standard parallels excellent for mid latitude distribution map the projection does not contain the noticeable distortion of lambert's projection frequently used for map of the united states for thematic map and for world atlases next is lambert conformal conic projection that is lambert conformal conic also known as conical orthomorphic extensively used for large scale mapping of regions predominantly east west in extension further widely used for topographic map the next is the polyconic projection the map is neither conformal nor equal area but each parallel is true to scale the sole projection is used for large scale mapping of the united states by usgs simple conic projection also known as equidistant conic Medi meridian are true to scale that is no distortion in north south direction the most common projection is atlas for small countries and after this we have some other projection for example like number 1 sinusoidal projection which is used since 16th century also called as sanson flamsteed or mercator's equal area projection pseudo cylindrical projection map is equal area used in atlas map of south america and africa occasionally used for world map modifications are called as sinusoidal sinusoidal interrupted and sinusoidal 3x interrupted van der grinten projection which shows the entire art within one circle all area shape and angle are greatly distorted and the last one is winkel triple which is used in several atlases a triple comprises compromise of reduced shape area and distance distortion selected by national geographic society for its new reference world map in place of robinson projection now students let us look into the application of map projection in geographic information system first is like like the model cartographic map are the representative of real world geographic information system has evolved out of a long tradition of map making it is a computer based integrated information system for computing storing analyzing rectifying and display data that related to geographical positions of the earth surface in many respect it has 
dramatically increase the amount of information that can be contained and manipulated in a map. So, cartographic limitations are also applied to a digital map. The application of GIS makes the process of map making more effective. It is a system of digital map making, so it also can be termed as digital cartography, which is the process of a map making. The application of map projection in GIS has its own importance as it had earlier in manual process of map making. The, pro the map projection is the transformation of spherical or ellipsoid surface into flat surface. It is one of the many method that used to represent 3D, three-dimensional surface on the 2D plane in cartography. In GIS map projection, it is first step that one has to consider. During the process of map making, first, the cartographer has to maintain or preserve the map projection system in reference to the other spatial data. The process of projecting map in GIS platform is usually known as georeferencing. However, in GIS software, there is no need to create the projection system by the user already instigated, but one has to apply the proper projection system considering the other spatial data distorting properties matrix properties of map making. Georeferencing is the process of assigning spatial coordinates to the raster data set that is spatial by nature but has not explicit geographic coordinate system. It is also well known as rectification. During the process of georeferencing, one has to assign the map projection, datum and coordinate system. Now let us look into some of the important aspect of datum coordinate system and UTM in GS. Let us first look into what is datum. A datum is a mathematical model that fits the earth into an ellipsoid. In a reference point from the real world to this ellipsoid, the earth surface is not perfectly sphere or round. It is ellipsoidal with mountains and valleys. The datum is used to maintain or correct this undulation of the earth in the process of map making. Most commonly used ellipsoid in GIS is WGS84, that is World Geodetic Survey 1984. It is mostly useful as well as suitable if we are going to compute and compare data collected by GPS that is global positioning system on the map. Therefore, it is widely used in GIS in topographical mapping. The collected by the GPS give negligible or considerable shift. The next is what is coordinate system? Coordinate system enable geographic data set to use common location for integration. A coordinate system is a reference system used to represent the location of geographic features, imagery and observation such as global positioning system location within a common geographic framework. Now what is UTM in GIS? The Universal Traverse Marketer which is also known as UTM is the most commonly and widely used projection system in GIS. This projection uses a traverse cylinder second to the reference surface. The UTM divides the world into 60 narrow longitudinal zone of 6 degree numbered from 1 to 60. The narrow zone of 6 degree makes the distortion so small that they can be ignored when constructing a map for the scale of 1 is to 10,000 or smaller. It is recommended for topographic mapping by the UNC, that is United Nations Cartography Committee in 1952. As you can see here in the diagram, this shows the projection plane of UTM projection in a second cylindrical in a traverse position. Next let us look into the UTM projection. The UTM projection is designed to cover the whole world excluding the Arctic and Antarctic region. The area not included in the UTM 
system are in the northern hemisphere from 84 degree to 19 degree north and in the southern hemisphere from 80 degree to 90 degree south. This particular area can be mapped with the help of universal polar stereos stereographic projection. Its zone of UTM has its own central meridian. The India comes under between UTM zone 42 of north hemisphere to UTM zone 47 degree of northern hemisphere. As UTM almost cover the whole world, it is mostly used in topographical mapping of the earth. It mostly preserve the area of the earth's surface. However, for India, the best suited projection is Lambert conformal conical projection for large scale topographical mapping. So a note can be generated here that it can be said that regarding GIS platform, the most widely used map projection system is UTM projection and commonly used datum that is WGS 84. So dear student, in summary for conclusion, let us look back what we have studied today. First, we have studied on the basic concept of map projection and we have tried to look into what map projection can do and how are we going to transform this curved surface of the earth into a flat surface. Next, we have looked into the distortion while which we encountered while we try to reproduce the earth. Next, we have also looked into the aspect of map projection and we also have looked into the coordinate systems and in coordinate system we have looked into how to convert these geographic coordinates into a projected coordinates. We have also studied different types and different kinds of map projection and their properties and their uses in different various purposes. Next we have also looked into the application of map projection in GIS and how it is useful in study, various study and also we have looked into the concept of datum, we have also looked into various concept of UTM and their uses in map projection. I hope everyone will be benefited from this lecture. Thank you.